Hey guys, welcome back. Hopefully you felt good in that first exam uh, on chapters one and two, because we're going to just be adding on in chapter three, which we're going to start today. Um, first two sections, three, one and three, two, adding this new thing called radians. But before we get to that, I think you guys hopefully believe me by now. What is one of the most important things that we've been focusing on in this whole first unit, chapters one and two? Degrees. Good. And what about them? It's what makes um, so the triangle. Yeah, very good. And no matter what quadrant they put us in so that we could rotate and draw that triangle to the X axis, we notice that that angle that is at the origin and the X axis that we rotated around to get to is always going to form an acute angle. And that acute angle is what we call that reference angle. So before we actually move on, I wanted to do it one more time with you all. One through, I think I put 12. Yeah, 12 of them on there for you guys to go ahead and pause the video right here. Knock those out as quickly as possible because if you can do these, then what we add on to today should make it a little bit easier for you and more manageable. All right. So go ahead and pause it right here and try to knock those out as quickly as possible. And don't forget. What you're actually evaluating are these values. So that first one there, that's 210 degrees, which means we're going to be in quadrant three, because I know 180 is here. Okay, so that is what is going to make sure that you use the proper sign. But ultimately, you need to have memorized those reference angles, the 30, the 45, the 60, and some of those quadrantal angles, those multiples of 90, in order to find them. All right? So go ahead, and I'll give you guys about five quick minutes to do that. Hopefully less. Good luck. All right, guys, hopefully you were able to knock out all of these with ease. I'm going to go ahead and blow it up here so it's a little bit larger so that we can work on these individually. I'm going to just run through these really quick just as a reminder and show you what you should be looking at. Two things, right? They gave you two things. Tangent of an angle. Remember, in order to evaluate a trig function, you need an angle to give me the ratio out which we know tangent is either the opposite over adjacent if we're not on an x, y axis or y over x. So again, the two things that you should be looking at are where are you located at and what is the reference angle so that you can give me the ratio. So tangent of 210, we know we're going past 180 by 30 degrees. So my reference angle is 30 and I'm going to be in quadrant three. So I know my answer is positive. And if I have the tangent of 30 memorized, which I do, then I'm done. It should be that quick, that easy, because guys, all we're gonna be doing is adding on to this. We're actually gonna be measuring angles in a different and new way. Still gonna be getting us to that same spot. It's just a different way to do it. Okay, much more applications with this new way that we're going to be learning today. All right, sine of 315. I know that's almost 360. It's actually 45 less. How do I know that? I memorized it. So I know I'm using a 45 degree angle for sine. And all students take calculus. Helps me to know that since I'm in this quadrant, it's going to be negative. And the sine of 45 is root 2 over 2. All right. Cosine of 120, what'd you get? Negative half. 
Very good. Should have been a 60 degree reference angle and negative. That quick, that easy. Excellent. Cotangent to 270. Reference is, you could go ahead. Oh, I thought it's undefined. Good. Now, remember, when we land on those quadrants, then we don't have the 30, 45, 60 ratios that always come out the same, no matter what size triangle we're on. So we said that if we're going to rotate around 270 degrees, if we went all the way around, we'd have a circle. And we then, therefore, get to choose the size of the circle we want, any one we want, and that's what we want is one. So we already know that to get to this point, 270 degrees of rotation, we'd be at zero, negative one. And that tells me my X, my Y, and, of course, the radius to get there would be a length of one. Therefore, radii are always positive. So there isn't really a reference angle. You could say it's 90 degrees, but that doesn't really help us because it's not one of our special 30, 45, or 60s, but we have everything we need. The X, the Y, and the R, no matter what trig function they give us for that angle. And all you need to know is that cotangent is the reciprocal, and it happens to be the co-function of tangent, but we're going to use the reciprocal fact of tangent which we know is y over x. So cotangent would be x over y. And because the x is 0 and the y is negative 1, Anissa, is it undefined? Yeah, because it, wait, no, it would be 0. Yeah, very good. If we have nothing and we divide it any number of ways, we get nothing. So our answer to this one is indeed zero. When we're dividing by a zero, we cannot do that, and that's when it would be undefined. In other words, if that was tangent. Okay? So if you guys have any other that you want to go over, let me know. I don't want to go through all 12. I just wanted you guys to be able to do these and do them quickly because I told you, last chapter, super important, not going to go away. Any of those that you guys want to quickly check? I'm good. Everybody feeling good? All right. Well, then we're going to go ahead and move on to what we are tasked with now, which you guys know, I told you at the very beginning of this course, everything in math just keeps building on itself. So now that we've talked about all the things that we did in the first two chapters, we're gonna add on to that and switch it up a bit. And we're gonna do that with this thing called radians. So we're gonna be measuring, again, angles, but now in this new form called a radian. Anybody heard of that before? All right, well, we're gonna talk about what a radian is, make sure that we're careful when we are approximating and using our calculator and where it came from. We're going to talk about the number pi. All right? And this is actually how you spell it. It's not with an E. That's dessert. Okay. So what happened was long, long time ago, people were very much interested in the shapes and measurements. And they got into measuring circles. And they talked about with the circle, what if we went right through the center from one place on our circle to the other, going through our center. Well, what do we call that?
Well, from the center to a place on my circle, that's called a radius. But all together, that's called a diameter. And what they discovered was no matter how big or how small the circle was, there was this one ratio that always worked out really, really nicely. And I shouldn't say nicely because it wasn't a nice number, but it was the same. No matter how big or small the circle was, when they measured all the way around the circle, anybody remember what we called that? The perimeter of the circle? What do we call it? Circumference. Very good. The circumference. If they measured around and they actually took from one end to another going through the center, that diameter, and they divided it, it always came out the exact same number. No matter how big or small. And they discovered that pretty early on, and that's pretty cool. The unfortunate part is it didn't come out nice, which means when we take the circumference and divide by the diameter, it came out some big old nasty number every time. It's approximately 22 over 7. And you guys know how many times does 7 go into 22? 3 would be 21. So then we'd have one left over that we'd have to three try to something. Back. What's that? Sorry, I didn't hear it. Um, yeah, we'd have one left over divided by our 7. And that's where we get, you can probably guess, that 3.14-ish. Now, this is the most important thing in it. It goes on forever. And it never ends and never repeats. That's something we call an irrational number because it's not a ratio. It's technically not something that we could put as a fraction. But that's as close as we can get. And because it came out the same every time, but it's not this or that, it's actually all of this. They said, you know what, let's just make up a symbol and call it that. And do you all know what they called it? Pi. Good guess. Very good. So we know the circumference divided by the diameter is always equal to that number pi. And so therefore, if you wanted to know what the circumference was, what could you do to solve for the circumference? And hopefully you remember that is the formula for the circumference, the distance all the way around. Well, you guys know how to measure an angle. From the center, we always started in the positive x direction, and then we said we'd rotate in the positive y direction, up. And we knew that if we sliced this whole circle into how many parts? We would call it a degree. How many slices did we say we would cut it into to be one degree? That's right. And I think I told you guys the story about why they guessed 360. That's what they thought. By looking at the stars and everything else and the patterns and trying to make notes of it, that it took 360 days for the sun to revolve and change around the earth. And we know it's the inverse. But for us, we wanted to be able to measure in a different way as well. So that's where we're going to introduce this thing called a radian. And it's pretty rad. Right? You guys will see. It's really, really nice. It allows us to not work with degrees all the time, even though, unfortunately, just like our counting system, feet, miles, we have an idea when somebody says, oh, it's about 30 feet wide. We know about how long that is. 
But if somebody said it's about 30 meters, like, uh, I didn't, sorry, I didn't run track in high school. I don't really know what you're talking about. So that's how radians is probably going to feel for you. Okay, we have a better comfort zone with degrees. But radians are more powerful because we can use them as angle measurements. And as you're going to see when I define it here for you in a minute, we can also use it as lengths and measurements. So here is how they define a radian. Okay, if I was to measure this from here to here, we know that that is a what? Radius. Good. Some length we called a radius. Now, what about this distance from here to here? Arc. What's well, also a radius? Right? Just like from here out to a point on my circle, here out to a point on my circle, that's also a radius. So you can see that my angle that we are building is built by two radii. But I believe it was Anissa that said, when we open that angle up on this circle, we have created an arc. And so the letter that they decided to use for that is S. Okay, and what is true about a radian is you know one degree is equal to one three hundred and sixtieth of our circle. But what is one radian? And unfortunately, guys, there is no symbol for radian. So whether you put a one or a one, unless you have a degree up there, then I know what that is. If you don't, then I'm going to assume that that one represents a radian measurement if we're talking about angles. So if you guys have noticed when I'm going through your group quizzes and stuff, I've been putting the little degree symbol, that's why it matters from here on out. Because otherwise, if you don't put it, it means one radian. But what is one radian equivalent to? Well, by definition, this length here that is created by this opening of this angle, which is made up of two radii, if this distance here is also equal to these distances, meaning this, then that's what we know is equal to one radian. Okay, so again, I don't know if you guys remember at the very beginning, I said that multiplying by ones is pretty important. So if I take this and I divide both sides, then I have my one radian and it's equal to the S over R when S is equal to what? So how do we measure any size radian? It's always that. So if I knew that this arc here was a length of R, which is the same as this and the same as that, then that means I have an angle measurement in radians of one. Okay, but is it always going to be exactly the same distance as the size or radius of my circle? Of course not. What if I went all the way over here, which we know is 180 degrees? How big of an opening is that for my angle now? Or what if I went all the way around? 
Does anybody know that one? Does anybody know this distance here? 360. Okay, now good. You're talking, and this on the inside. I'm talking about the outside. Because I know that there is a relationship between the inside and the outside in radian measurements. What did we call this just a little bit ago? Circumference. Ah, very good. And what did we say the circumference was equal to? Two pi or uh, pi and diameter. Good, we said it was pi times diameter, which we also said a diameter is made up of? Half the radius. Two, I mean, uh, actually. Two radius. Yeah, two radii. So we're gonna say that the circumference is also equal to two radii times pi. And we usually put the two with the pi in front because these are numbers. This is a variable. So this is the alternative to that. And guys, if we go all the way around, we know the arc is not always going to be R. That's just by definition what one radian is equivalent to. That's if we replace this with an R, then we know we get that one radian. So how many radii or radian measurements do you think there would be if I go all the way around? See if I can open it about the same as that one. That's one, that's two. Does that look about the same? Three, four, five, Six. Maybe it's exactly six. Maybe I'm a little off. Maybe it's a little more than. How do we know? Well, by definition, we said any number of radians is equal to the length of that arc that is created by that opening. And we just got done saying that if we go all the way around, we know what that arc is, don't we? So the angle in radians is dependent on how big the arc is and how big the circle is, the radius. And if we go all the way around, we said that's our circumference. So couldn't we just put in place of the S, what we know C is? And what ends up happening? Since these are both multiplying. Our R's would cancel out and we know that how many radians in angle measurements would it be to go all the way around, which we called the circumference? So we know the angle measurement in radians to make one whole rotation. Is equal to two pi. And didn't we just get done saying what pi was about? We know that is 3.14-ish. Well, then what happens when we approximate this and double it? Yeah, we're going to have 6, 1, 
two, three, four, five, six, with a little bit extra. Because when you double this, you get about 6.28-ish. So you can see we're going to have six and about a little more than a quarter radians in one full circle. Okay, so don't we already know what one full circle is for angle measurements? What do we say? In degrees, what was it? It's 360 degrees. Well, in radians, what do we know that the angle measurement is equivalent to then? 6.28 radians. Good. And that's about, right? We don't like the about stuff. So guess what we're going to use? The, yeah, the 2 pi formula. If they want us to approximate, then we will use approximately what we know pi is, 3.14-ish. But if they want exact, we're going to leave it exactly as it is, which is pi, which is even easier, actually, right? So this is the new thing that we have to memorize. But why go one whole circle 360 degrees around when we can just memorize half of it? We know that these are equivalent because that's one full rotation. And in degrees, we know that's 360. So we know that this and this are equivalent. But what would be easier? Since this is an equation, I can do whatever I want. If I want to cut both sides in half, I can. And what do we say half of 360 is? 180. And what is half of two pies? One pie. So we are going to memorize that pi radians that's an angle measurement, is equal to 180 degrees. That's the one thing I want you guys to memorize for this chapter and for today. Okay, that pi is equal to 180 degrees. That's the big change for this chapter that we will now be using this different looking angle measurement that includes this weird number we call pi. So I wanted to give you a little bit of a background with it before we just started using it. Hopefully you were able to follow some of the stuff that I went over, all right? The definition of what a radian is, and we know one radian is that. And then from there, we know all the way around, we could use the 2 pi r as our arc length. And then the r's canceled out to get one full rotation in radian measurements is 2 pi, or what we knew it as, 360 degrees. OK? Well, then now that we have that memorized, shouldn't be too hard. All you're going to have to figure out is, hey, are they talking about angles where I'm going to use pi as the 180 degrees that I know it's equal to? Or are we going to use a distance where I know pi is about 3.14? That's the difference that you're going to have to figure out. Okay, are we using the approximate length? Or are we using an angle measurement. And if they want it exact, leave it exactly as is. If they want an approximate, we'll approximate. And by the way, if you wanted to know what one radian is about in degrees, take that one thing that I told you. And if you want to know what it is in degrees, then we're going to have to make this, which is in radians. Remember, we don't write rad after it i was just doing that to emphasize that this angle is in radian measurement what would i have to do to get this to be a one to figure out what it would be in degrees i 
I'd have to divide both sides by pi. Because what is anything divided by itself? One. And again, just for emphasis, I'll put radian. And now I'm going to approximate what it is because what is 180 degrees divided by pi? We'll punch that into your calculator. 57.29. Very good. Ugh. I don't want to memorize 57.3. There's already too much in this class that we have to memorize. So let's just approximate it. Let's round up. What would be easier to memorize that one radian is about? Let's just say it's about 60 degrees even though we know it's about 57.3. 60 is easier to memorize, isn't it? So look at my next question that I posed to you all. Then what is the main thing that you need to memorize for radian angle measurements? That pi is equal to what? Half of a circle, 180 degrees. Okay? Just, again, to emphasize, that's the one thing that you need to take away from today. Well, then, how are we going to apply this to all the stuff that we learned in the last unit? What was the key concept of the entire first unit? What do we end up using over and over and over, which we spent more time on today? Degrees. Not just degrees. That wasn't degrees. necessarily a concept. That was just an angle measurement, right? Yeah. What did we use those degrees to do? Find measures. Good. Using our trig functions, and no matter what quadrant we were put in, what did we end up using? Quadrant, right now. Mm. Degree? Oh, referencing equals. Yep. So guess what we're going to want to make sure that we know how to do again? Our reference angles, but now in what? Indian. You got it. So let's find our reference angles. in radians. What's the one and only thing I told you to memorize again? That pi is equal to 180 degrees. And how many reference angles do we have? Three. So then if I want 30 degrees, what would I have to do to the degrees? And of course, both sides to keep it equal. What would I have to do in order to get 30 degrees? You divided by six. Good. I just dropped the zeros because they both have that, right? So if I just divided both by 10, I can see what I'm really trying to get is the 18 to become a three. Of course, they have the zeros for 180 to get to the 30, but very good, Luis. I'm just going to divide both sides by six. Can I do that? Yeah, it's an equation. I can do whatever I want. 
And how many times does six go into that 18? Three. And then how many times does it go into the zero? Zero. Zero. So I know that dividing both sides by six gives me 30 degree angle, which is a what kind of angle in radians? Five or six. Let's jump to the 60 because it's a little bit easier because it ends in a zero, just like 30. What would I have to do then to get that 180 to become a six? D. You divided three. Very good. So I know that pi over three is equal to six and zero. And now that we have these kind of wedged between, we know that 45 is between the 45 and 60. So it has to be between the pi over three and pi over six. So it's either a pi over four or a pi over five. All we're going to have to figure out is, is it dividing by five? or is it dividing by four, that's gonna get us our 45. And if we divide by five, how many times is five going to 18? Three. Already not what I needed. So I'm thinking it's gonna be divided by what? By four. And how many times does four go into 18? Four times which would give me 16, so I'd have two left over, then bring down my zero. And how many times is four going to 20? Five. Beautiful. Then there are our three reference angles. But now in what? In radian. But of course, we want to also get to the other quadrants. So let me do a quick little sketch off to the side and let's talk about what we already know. What was the one thing I told you guys to memorize? For today, pi is equal to what? 180. That's a trig. You've already known from geometry in high school and all your past experience, pi is about 3.14, but now you know it also, not just the length of three-ish, but also an angle of 180 degrees. So I know that this would be pi. Well, then what would this be? How much of that? Half of it. Very good. So that would be pi over two. And if this is one pi over two, then this would be two pi over twos, wouldn't it? Which means what would this be? Three pi over two. And if we added another, this is one, this was two pi over twos, which pi over two. it would be four pi over two, which would be what? Two pi. Very good. There's your four quadrantal angles. Don't forget we started at zero. Radians or degrees, it's still a zero. Okay, so here's our new measurement system with radians. And then we built the 30, the 45, and the 60, which was pi over six. Pi over four. And the bigger one has to be divided by something smaller to stay bigger. That's the pi over three. What we wanna do is get that same 30, 45, and 60 here, here, and there. So let's do one at a time. Let's start with the 30. And let's get quadrants two, three, and four involved. Well, 
if I'm going to do everything to the x axis, what do I want this and this in terms of if we're using the 30 or pi over 6? Well, when this was 180 degrees, didn't we just come back by 30 and add by 30? And here when it was 360, didn't we just come back by 30? So that means whatever our reference angle is, we're still going to be doing the same thing, just adding or subtracting some, whether it's the 30, the 45, or the 60. But with these, unfortunately, they're fractions. And in order to get a fraction that you're going to be adding or subtracting to, you need common denominators. And so if I'm dealing with the pi over 6 for all of these quadrants, then what I'm going to want to do is rewrite this as my multiplying by 1, my silly looking pi. Isn't that still pi? 6 pi over 6 is? How about 12 pi over 6? Isn't that still 2 pi? Yeah. So what I'm doing for this is just rewriting it. As my pi and two pi. Just in a different way. And that's going to allow me to do what for quadrant two here. If I want a 30 degree or pi over six reference angle, what am I going to do to this six pi over six? I'm going to subtract that 30 degrees, which means I'm now going to have how many pi over sixes? You guys see it? If you just left it as pi and you would have said, all right, well, I got to subtract a pi over six, because I need that 30 degree reference angle, then you would have to multiply this by six pi over six. Right? That one, that fancy one, so that I have my common denominator, and now I can subtract and get five pi over sixes. And what are we going to do to get to quadrant three? We're going to add a pi over six. But again, to my pi, that looks a little bit different. It's multiplied by fancy one. So what am I going to have as a reference angle of 30 degrees in quadrant three? In radian measurements, it will be what? Seven pi over six. And how about in quadrant four? 11 pi over six. How'd you get that, Luis? Uh, I... Sorry, man. You're like a, a bad boyfriend. We're yeah. breaking up. Yeah. I think your internet connection might be a little off, but it's breaking up a lot. But yeah, I think you said you just subtracted the pi over six. But remember, you had to take the original two pi and multiply by that fancy one again of six over six. And where's the six coming from? It's my reference angle. Okay, so that's where the 12 pi over six is. And we just subtracted one pi over six to get the 11. Now guys, here's the beautiful thing. If we were still in degrees, let me show you this, it's awesome. If we were still in degrees in quadrant two, three, and four, we know it would be 180 here, and it would be the subtracting and adding by 30. 
in all these other places. So in quadrant two, if we were in degrees, we know it'd be 150, 210, 330. And the problem with that is, what's the reference angle? Well, you'd actually have to figure it out from our x-axis, how much did we add or subtract? Here's the beautiful thing about radian measurements. Guys, check it out. It shows you what the reference angle already is. It's 30. What's the 5, 7, or 11 going to do? It's going to put you in different quadrants which means you need to pay attention to the positive or negative value, depending on if it's sine, cosine, or tangent. But in radian measurements, no matter what quadrant you're in, you should already be able to see that reference angle. So what do we know is gonna happen for this one? What are they all gonna have in them? I have a Very good. It's just a matter of how many pi over fours. Well, you guys know 45 degrees is right in the middle of 90. So there's my one pi over four. There's two. So this would be what? One, two, three pi over fours to get there. That would be my reference. Now, if you wanted to do it, then just like we did before, multiply by that fancy one, come back a pi over four and add a pi over four. And you can see that from the four pi over fours, which is my pi, I would get three pi over fours or adding to get to quadrant three would be what? Five pi over fours. Who can look at this and tell me what the last one would be then? Sounds like nobody yet. We'll get there. But again, notice what do each of these have in them? Our reference angle. The only thing that's going to change is how many we have, depending on what quadrant they want us in. If there's just one of them, then you're in quadrant one. So again, last one here. How many pi over threes? Well, what are we going to do to help ourselves? We're going to make our pi look like a little bit fancier pi, a three pi over three, which is still just pi. And instead of two pi, we're also going to multiply by that fancy one of three, which would give us six pi over three. Does everybody agree that that's still two pi? Yes. Yep. Then help me out. What would this one be to be in quadrant two? Two pi over three. Good. How about in quadrant three? Four pi over three. Good. And how about the last one? Five pi Five over three. three. Excellent. It's that easy, my friends. All you got to do is make sure that you now get used to. And as some of you said at the beginning of today, I need to put more time into this class. Got to study more. I told you, I warned you, those reference angles are not going anywhere anytime soon. Here they are, but in a different look. Still going to have to know the sine, cosine, tangent. And if you know the reciprocal functions, then you know everything you need to know for this class. We're just going to learn different applications as we progress through. Okay. So just to make sure that you guys get that, 
you understand what we're doing. I wanted to conclude real quick, and I'll leave this up here to hopefully sway you one way or the other. If you had a choice to work with degrees or radians, which would you choose and why? How many people would say degrees? Give me the thumbs up, raise your hand, chat, speak up, whatever you want. How many of you are choosing degrees over radians? Okay, how many of you are choosing radians? Hmm, impressive. Most of the time when I do this in class, everybody chooses what they're most comfortable with. And why do they choose that? Because it's easier. It's more comfortable. No doubt. So they choose degrees. But radians are actually a whole lot easier to work with. Because when I give you, say, 315 degrees, you don't have to figure out what the reference angle is if it's in radians. All you got to figure out is, what quadrant will that put me in? And once you figure that out, pretty easy. It will get easier, okay? It's going to take some time to get used to, no doubt. But I'm glad that you guys are open to it. Because before we pause and move on to our next section, the last one for today, I wanted to make sure that you guys can do that. So I'll give you... Five minutes to tackle these six problems. Go ahead and give it a shot. If you need to work together, that's fine too. Those of you watching this back, go ahead and pause it and try it on your own. Good luck. All right, let's see how you guys did. We'll go through this together. Sign of five pi over six. Okay. Again, two things that I need to figure out. Where am I? And what's my reference angle? So I'll go ahead and put this so I remember what's positive, what's negative. And since we're dealing with sine, I notice I have pi over six, which right then and there, I should be thinking, well, the one thing he told me to memorize was that pi was equal to 180. And if we divide it by six, we said that that was going to go in three. And then this is a 30 degree reference angle. And do we know the sign of 30? Okay. Yeah, we better by now. One half. Very good. So my answer is one half. I just got to figure out if it's positive or negative. So that's where the five comes in. And if I have five thirties, I know five times 30 is what? At 30. It's 150 degrees, actually. Which means I know I'm in this quadrant. Which means I therefore know that it is positive one half. Now, how else could you have done this? Done what we just did when we explained and tried to find all of our reference angles in every quadrant. I know that this is pi. And since I see pi over six, I want to rewrite this as six pi over sixes. And I know five pi over sixes means I came back one and not added by sim. There. Positive. Okay, let's do it again. Cosine of three pi over four. What are you thinking? Well, I'm thinking that's 4 pi over 4. And if I'm at 3 pi over 4, then that means I'm here. With the reference angle of pi over 4, 4 cosine, which I know my answer is going to be what? Negative. And do you know the cosine of 45 degrees or pi over 4? Root 2 over 2. Done. 
Man, I love Radiance. See if we're getting some steam here. Let's go to the next one. I see pi over three, which I know is what in degrees? 60. And do I know the tangent of 60? One. Careful. Oh. 30, 60, 90 is always going to have that root three involved. Root so three. Tangent of 60 is just root three. All we have to figure out is where is four pi over three? Well, I know three pi over three is right there. That's my pi, my 180 degrees that I told you all is the only thing that you really need to memorize. That's the new thing for chapter three. It's just a matter of how we use it. And since it's four pi over three, then I know I'm going to be here. And because we are tangent, we are positive that our answer is positive. You guys got the feel? No, not yet. I just introduced this to you, right? It's going to take some time, but make sure that you put in the time so that you do feel comfortable with it. Let's do the last three real quick. How about pi over two? Well, we said if pi is 180, if we cut it in half, we said that would be what? 90. And we know that each one of these are split into 90. So if I go three 90s, that meant one pi over two, two pi over twos, and three pi over twos. That means we're on a quadrantal angle, which we know that is zero comma negative one with a radius of one and therefore we know sine is the y over the r we have the y we have the r so my answer is what negative one How about cos of two pi over three what kind of reference angle are we looking at uh 60 and do we know the cosine of 60 One half, I believe. Yes, you are right, because we know the sine of 30 is one half. And those are co or complementary functions. Two pi over three is going to put me where? To quadrant two. Good, because I know three pi over three is there. So we're going to come back a pi over three to get my two, which means all student, we are negative for cosine. And notice I only gave you sines, cosines, and tangents just to kind of start you off nice and easy. Didn't do any reciprocal stuff yet because I'm just easing you into the new stuff, which is radian measurements. All right, quick, last one. Can you go over E one more time? Yeah, for sure, for sure. So what did we have on E? We had the pi over 3 which we know is equivalent to 60 degrees. Because remember, you divide both of these by three, you get six, zero. A lot of people see the three and they think 30, and that's where they goof. Okay, careful with that. 60 degrees, four cosine is one half. And because it's two pi over threes, and I know pi, which I could rewrite as three pi over three is here, then I'm gonna to have to come back to be two pi over three, which because it's cosine, I know is therefore going to be negative. Follow that, Anissa? Yeah, thank you. You got it. And is it Anissa? I felt like I said it wrong. Yeah. Anissa. Thank you. All right. Last one. Anissa, pi over six is a reference angle of what? 90. Do you know the tangent of 30 degrees? 
Good. Three over three. Good. Very good. You all should know that by now. And if it's root three over three, all I got to see is where I'm located to tell whether it's positive or negative. And 11 pi over six, well, I know that this is six pi over six because that's pi. And this is 12 pi over six because it's double that. And therefore, since we are actually evaluating for tangent 11 pi over six, I'm gonna have to come back one. And therefore, very good. Do you see why I emphasize so much in chapter one and two, once we learned about reference angles and all those special right values, how important it is? The nice thing about radians is it shows you what the reference angle is without you even having to really think. You just now got to take some time to memorize what those new big three will look like. And remember, the 30 and the 60 are complements of each other. 45 is the one that has the four. Okay, that is it for that section. And I know it was a long one because it's the basis of the rest of the class. Now that we have this new measurement of angles called a radian. So I really wanted to go slow on this very first section of chapter three because we will use radians and degrees simultaneously sometimes for the remainder of the course. Which takes me to the very first thing I had up here. Mention calculator mistakes from here on out. If you guys recall, when we actually started approximating, I mentioned to you to go and check your mode and make sure that you're either in radians or degrees. And back then, we only knew degrees. That's what we wanted in it. Now we'll have to toggle between the two. And again, most of your calculators are a lot easier. There's just a DRG button that you can hit and it will allow you to change very quickly. Okay. Again, be careful with this stuff. It's a lot of the same, but we're going to continue to add some more things using this radian measurement starting in this new section. All right. You guys good with just moving on? Or does anybody need a break? Good. I remember last time with the group that usually shows up, you guys just want to continue on. So that's what we're going to do and move on to 3.2. And as you can see, now that we've talked in depth about radians, now they're going to move us right into already the applications of it. The cool thing is in 3.2, there are only two things that we're going to add on. Okay. And I'm just going to go through the derivation of what the formula is. And then I'll add on the second one and hopefully it'll make sense. And then you guys can practice in the group quiz with whatever time's left. Okay. So the two applications we're going to be talking about with this new angle measurement called radians is one, this thing called the arc length. And then I'll get to the other in a little bit later. It's called the area of a sector. So if we're trying to find the length of an arc, what do you think we would need to know in order to find that? You would need an angle, wouldn't you? Very good. So we know that if we start at the origin or the center and we go out in that positive x direction and we rotate up some angle measurement around, which now we have two ways to do that, degrees and radians. We know that when we do that, we form a circle. But if I just wanted to find some part, say from there to there, that angle measurement, that distance around, 
Well, what we're going to do is actually start with the full circle. Because don't we already know what the full circle distance around is? That's what we called the circumference. Right? And we said, by exploring, I kind of went through it all with you guys, that the angle of rotation to get around that would require us to go 2 pi or 360 degrees. So you guys can actually see here, that's one radian, right? If I was to measure that length, that length, and that length, that would be one radian. There would be two. That would be three. So you can see to get to 180, it's a little bit more than three. It's exactly pi. Four, five, six. And a little bit more than that, it's actually twice as much as that. And that's why we say it's 2 pi of those radii to get around. You can see it's actually built into the circumference. It's this many radians. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and a little bit more. It's roughly 6.28. It's exactly... 2 pi of those radians. But if we're only trying to find a certain part of it, right? Just part of a whole. Well, then let's make it easy. If I wanted to find the length of an arc, let's say from here to here. Don't we already know what the whole thing is? We said it depends on one thing and one thing only. The radius, the size of the circle, right? Because if I drew it smaller and I still went that 90 degrees, you can see my arc length is going to be much smaller than this one. And if I made it bigger, you can see that the arc length would be even bigger. So it's all dependent on one and only one thing, the radius. But what we want to call, remember we called it S earlier? That's what is going to be called the arc length. We're going to use that as our letter to represent the distance of this. Well, I know that the circumference is equal to this, right? That's the whole thing. What if I only wanted this much of it? How much of the whole is this? Because that's what I'm looking at. I know that this represents all the way around, but if I want just the arc length, which they're using S to represent that on our circle, I need to know what of the whole, how much of the whole, and what is that going to depend on? It's going to depend on the angle. And if I wanted this much of it, you guys know it would just be one fourth. Or I could say it's 90 degrees out of the whole the whole 360, which again, you can see drop the zeros, nine goes into 30, one fourth. But is it always going to be exactly one fourth? Of course not. What now if it was that whole piece? What is it still going to depend on? That what is called a central angle. From the origin in our positive x, where we start rotating around some distance, it's going to depend on that angle of rotation of how much of the whole we would need.
So we are just going to set this up. How much of the entire 360 degrees? Now here's the problem. If I use 360 degrees, then yeah, in math, we always like to simplify. I can put this over one, I can cancel this with that. And then I get theta times pi times r over 180 degrees, and that's nasty. That's not good at all. But what would be better? Anyone want to guess? Instead of using 360 degrees, what did we just get done saying that that is equivalent to? Two pi. Very good. We're going to use radians. And why are radians so much better than degrees for this? Now look what we can cancel. Because all this is multiplying, I know anything divided by itself becomes a one. And what now do we have for our arc length? It only depends on the two things that matter. How big your circle is and how much you rotate it around. And that, my friends, is the new formula that you're going to have to memorize as well. Don't worry. The fun will not stop with memorization in this class. But what do you have to know that that angle has to be measured in in order for this simpler formula to be used? In order to use this really cool formula, you got to make sure it's rad. That angle has to be in radian measurement in order to be used. But hopefully you can see why it is what it is. It's pretty easy to see. Everybody good there? Yes. That's it for part one. Here's the second and final part. Now, instead of talking about the length of an arc formed by some angle, now what if we said, I actually want to look at the inside rather than the outside? Well, what do you think it's still going to depend on? how big your circle is, and for what portion of your circle do you need or want. But in order to find the area of just this section, we call a sector. Do you guys remember how to find the area of the entire circle? Anybody? I'm a little foggy, but... I isn't it pi r squared? Yes, very good. Not foggy at all, Luis. Pi r squared is how we find the inside because remember, area has to be in square units and that's why it's squared. But do we always want the entire area of the whole circle? No, we just want a section or what we call a sector of that circle. So not quite our triangle, right? Because it's curved here. I know some of you are like, oh, yes, we're back to trying. No, nah, not quite. Okay. If I went from this point to this point directly, that's your triangle. Right? Ours is bent. So that's why we need to use this. But we don't want the whole area. We just want a part of it. And what if I just wanted this half? Well, you heard me say it. I would take how much of this? Half. If I only wanted this, it'd be a fourth. But what if I wanted this much? What do I know of the whole for that area of a sector? 
how much of the whole thing will we have? It's entirely dependent on how much of a rotation out of the hole that you had. And as we saw in the previous, we can use the whole 360 degrees around, or now we can use what? Our radian measurement. And why do you think it would be beneficial to use radians over the degrees? Our pies will cancel out. So careful what's left on top and what's left on bottom. Well, as you can see, we have a one half there. We have an R squared and we have a theta. The only thing that's still on bottom was the two. So that's the only thing that has a fraction. So I'm not going to put it as a big fraction. I'm going to say one half. And I put the R squared in front of the theta because I didn't want to put theta R squared and you think that everything's squared. So that's why we put the R squared and then the theta. But that's it. That's the other formula that you guys need to write down and memorize so that we can use. I just like to derive them with you guys so that you can see why it is that nasty thing that it is. And don't forget, most important piece to this is the fact that we used what? We used two pi instead of 360 which means we're assuming that the angle that you are used for or using for the entire thing is in radians. So to use both of these really cool formulas, you got to make sure that they are rad. Okay. So that section will be much more application-based that's what it's titled. And you guys know applications mean work problems. All you really need to figure out is, hey, am I using this formula because they're talking about the outside length of something? Or am I using this formula because they're talking about the inside of something that we're rotating? The key is knowing for both of these R and theta. And again, please bold highlight, make sure in your notes that you have in order to use these really nice formulas, they have to be rad. All right, that's it. Not a whole lot. I'm gonna let you guys work on your group quiz in order to try some of these. Gave you a few examples of the more important stuff, which was evaluating our trig functions in this new angle measurement called a radian. All right, I'll be wrapping up, looking at all of your videos and everything for the um, exam today. And then I'll hopefully start knocking those out and you guys will see them updated as soon as you see that your uh, work that you turned in is complete. You know, I've already looked at your exam and compared them. Okay, otherwise any questions, I'll stick around. You guys have a good week. Make sure you work hard on this chapter three so that we can finish strong and do well for the rest of this semester. All right. Take care, everyone. I'll be in touch.